In this lesson, we'll learn more about the get by role locator. So let's go ahead and jump onto our terminal and start a interactive session. Now, if you're wondering why I have code highlighting and suggestions in my terminal, well, that's because I've enabled PT Python for my Python sessions. And if you'd like to do the same as well, check out the resources of this link. Now I'll go ahead and just set up the boilerplate. Okay, so I have set up the browser, opened a new page, and now we can get started. Now to test our locators, it'd be nice if we have a website with all kinds of different HTML elements. And we can just do that with this website. Of course, you'll find the same in the resources as well. That is bootswatch.com hyphen default. Now let's go ahead and go to the same. You can see it is a normal website with all kinds of elements, buttons, headings. So to start, let's say we'd like to select a button and we already selected links. So let's try selecting buttons like this default button. So let's go ahead and inspect its code. You can see the inspector is taking more than half of our web window, which is already half of a screen. So let's go ahead and dock it out. To do that, you can find this more options button, click on that and select the dock side as undock. It will become a free window, which you can move around. So I'll place it here and expand it in width. You can see the inspector. So let's go ahead and increase the size as well. Now we can go ahead and inspect this button, which is this default button. You can see it is type of a button and it has the default button text. Now to see the roles like in our Visual Studio Code, you can see this is the link. So if I go ahead and, and write this again, you can see all of the roles that are available and you can check out the same if you go ahead and click on this method. So hold control and click on this method. You can see the roles, you will have alert, applications, checkboxes, you have headings, you have mains, log, list item, you have links, which we did select, a lot of stuff. So you can check out it from here or from the Playwright docs as well. Now for the button element, it is button itself. So we can just go ahead, say page, get by role. And then I can just go ahead and give it the role of a button. The name on it says default button. So you will see I have formatted the line in a way it's easier to read. You don't have to, you can write it in one line, but it just makes things easier to read. So we've got our button, we can inspect it. So if I just type it BTN, hit enter, you can see it's a locate element with the selector. Now we can simply go ahead and highlight it. You can see our button being highlighted. We can also click it, which will of course lead to nothing. You can see if I click on this button, nothing happens, but it is clickable as well. Now let's try selecting a heading element. So let's pull up our inspector. We'll go ahead and select it. You can see it's a H2 element with heading of two. And we just saw the rule for a heading is heading. So if it's H1, H2, H3, whatever it is, if it's a heading, then you use the rule of heading. So we can use page, 
get by rule again and we'll give it the rule of heading and then the name on it says heading 2 so let's go ahead and highlight our locator you can see how high our heading is being highlighted now let's try selecting these radio buttons checkboxes we'll look at the input fields in the coming lesson for now let's just select try to select this radio button so let's pull up the inspector look at its code you can see it is also a input field but its type is radio so we'll be able to select it so we can go ahead and try to do something like a radio button page get by roll and we will give it the role of radio and to make sure it is there i will use this documentation so we should be able to find a radio like this great now we can just provide it a name and the name will be a bit too long so the radio has a label which is this much so i'll just go ahead and copy it so option one is this and that be sure to include why it's great mm. uh, now we can just paste it in and then i can just go ahead try to select it cool we have selected it and now if i go ahead and highlight it you can see our radio button is highlighted similarly we can select the checkbox as well so let's try to inspect it again we will use the get by role method we'll specify the role which is checkbox again you can just verify the role from the docs the name on it says default checkbox and then we will have it selected let's try highlighting it it's highlighted and now of course this is not we are discussing here but we can select it as well using the check method now we will learn more about these type of actions in the coming section but it's a small thing which we can do right now so if i execute the check method on the checkbox you can see it gets checked so that's how we can select different elements based on their role using the get by role method